I'm now going to show you uh, where the specific bone structures are and the soft tissue structures are that we're going to measure when we're making the last draft. And we're going to look at why they're, why they're, they're there. Um, the two models I'm going to use are this one that has all the tendons and the ligaments and the little intrinsic muscles, etc., on them, and this one, which is just the bones. So you can see how uh, small the foot looks in when it's just bones. Uh, and although all of this stuff is covering the bones, because it's soft, when I'm palpating the foot, I'm actually feeling through to this structure. On the model, it's hard, but on the real foot, everything is soft. And so when I'm feeling through the skin and the tendons and the muscles, I can feel where these bones are. And so in my mind, I can really visualize these bones through all of this stuff. So the first structure we're going to have a look at is, and we've already done it, is the first to the fifth ball joint. So that's the, the uh, ball joint measure, or the MPJs. And uh, we've, I showed you that earlier and uh, how that is then put onto the draft and the tape laid down and the, the figures written into it. And so we're going to do that same process in the next four. The next measure is called the behind the joint measure. So I still use the fifth toe joint, the ball of the fifth toe, but this time I'm coming around into the soft tissues behind the first toe joint. So I'm picking up the fifth to the behind the joint measure. And I'm just coming immediately behind where the, the uh, spherical containment of the, the ball joint is and measuring that and again putting exactly the right pressure on. Now I want to show you why that is an important measure. That measure is, defines the going on of the shoe. So if you look at this slip-on shoe, the measure that I've just measured is where the tab ends. And even if this was a lace-up shoe, the tongue and the laces all end just where that measure is. So as I put my foot in, it connects here, and that's tight. And you can just see that the heel passes the quarters and moves in when there's just enough pressure there. And when my foot is in, then there's enough pressure here to hold the foot on. So it's that balance between being able to get in and then having the shoe hold on to the foot. So that measure, again called the, the uh, behind the joint measure, runs immediately behind the first ball joint and straight around the fifth uh, ball joint. The next measure, we call it the instep measure, and you see it better on this bony structure, is measuring the highest point of the instep. And you see these are the metatarsals, they're long bones inside the foot, and of course these don't bend, they're rigid, but this part of the foot, the uh, tarsus, is made out of lots of little square bones, and they're flexible. And this is where the shock absorption occurs, where the arch deforms, where supination and pronation occur. And on a high heel, that's where the beautiful shape called the crank occurs on a high heeled last. So we need to know where these joints are. So we're going to wrap around, and I'll use the bone structure to show this, immediately in front of the base of the fifth metatarsal, and we're going to come up to the second cuneiform bone. And that bone, you can usually feel on any foot, you can feel where it is by palpating and pressing down. And that is a very, very important bone. In fact, the jargon is uh, we're going to measure to the bone. Well, of course, there's 27 bones in the foot, but that is the bone we mean. So... That is the instep measure, so again, it's the other side. We come just forward, and you can see the, the digiti minimi uh, extensor uh, muscle there, which is just nice and soft. So we're going to come around there, and we'll palpate and find the second cuneiform. So that is the instep measure. 
and again we lay the tape and, and we uh, mark down the uh, actual uh, girth measure there. Now the fourth measure, as you can see where these perineal uh, muscles, their tendon, the long and the short, go down under this notch. You can see the notch here. That's a soft tissue in there. And again, the digita minimi muscle is very soft in there. But that is the back side, the uh, proximal side of this group of bones that bend and give the foot all its flexibility and shock absorption. So we're going to go with the tape. We'll go into that notch there. And then we come up to where the foot meets the shin. There's a retinaculum, these, these ligaments that turn the tendons. That point on the foot is where we're going to measure, and again, just into that notch there. And this measure, of course, is the top of where the facings go. You know, the lace panels of any shoe can't go above here, otherwise they'll hurt. So again, we get the right pressure, we note what the girth is, we lay the tape down, trace it, and put the number in. So that's the four measures, the joint measure behind the joint, the instep, and the top of the instep. The next two measures actually use these points again, the second cuneiform and the top of the instep. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go around the bulb of the heel and measure to the same point. So we find the second cuneiform bone, we put zero of the tape on the second cuneiform bone. We then wrap the tape around the heel and cross it over and look. There it says 311. And that is the long heel measure. Long heel is very, very important. We'll see when we go to make a last. You'll see what that's doing is locating the point so that you know where this measure around the instep is. The sixth and final measure goes around the heel bulb again, but this time around the top of the instep. So that's the measure there on this. Of course, there'd be skin and everything on the real foot, but this is uh, 276, and that's called the short heel measure. Now, the short heel measure is really important because not only does it locate around the top of the foot, but it's also, when you put a foot in, you know, you're putting a boot on, it comes down. This same measure as the foot goes through the boot is what's called the, the uh, choke or the going on of the boot. So this is the pass line for a, a fashion boot, even if it has a zip or a lace-up boot or a pull-on boot like a Wellington. This is the short heel measure is what has to get through here. So that's a really, really important measure for boot making as well. So now we have on our draft, you can see it here. And here's the last. This, this is the last that that foot would, would fit into. So if you made a shoe on that last, if this was flexible, you could put this foot into it. And here's the draft. And this draft is made, uh, if, if this uh, foot had skin on it, is made to that, and then this last is made on that draft. And so all we need now are two length measures, um, which are recorded on here, and they're done with a size stick like this. It slides up and down. This is a very rare one. It's got inches, it's got millimeters, and it's got French Paris points and English sizes. So when the person, uh, the client is standing in the stocking feet, then we put the side stick beside and we just touch uh, when the foot is standing and we record that measure. I do it in millimeters now. And then when the client sits, we take a second measure. And that's because you can see when, when, the, uh, when the client's standing, the arch comes down and the foot is, is, is long. When he sits or she sits, the arch comes up and you can see the foot shortens there. And so you can see how as the weight's on, the foot gets longer, and the weight comes off, it gets shorter. So here's the draft. 
and later on I'll show you how you take this two-dimensional uh, tracing and use it to make a three-dimensional wooden model. This has about a 30 millimeter, inch and a quarter heel, but I could also from this draft make a very flat last or I could make right up to a four inch heel on this last by knowing you know, how all these joints flex as you go up onto a high heel and on a low heel. So that's, uh, that's how we've created this draft. And later on, I'm going to show you the whole sequence with a client standing up and then sitting. I'll go through the whole sequence in one move. And then we'll see how to create this. And everything that I've talked about so far will come together in one complete, uh, simple act of measuring the foot. And when you get good at it, um, it gives the client a lot of confidence because you just you do it, you know what you're doing, and he feels that, or she feels that, and um, so a lot of practice is required so that this just becomes second nature.